Last episode on Sailing Millennial Falcon. We hauled anchor in Dominica and made our way north to Guadeloupe, where we were greeted by some friendly locals. Kiara then proceeded to consume a large portion of our budget in pastries, for which she was rewarded with some rocky and sleepless nights at anchor. We then made the brief jump north to Pigeon Island, during which I discovered that tonic water is horrible. of our arrival we were desperate for supplies so we headed ashore to forage for food. We've got yeah. fresh food grocer, Lita Price and Ecomax, all massive supermarket Price. chains with awesome provisions and uh, easy access, really sheltered dinghy dock. Yeah. It's raining again. I just started filming. I don't care. We're going. <laughs> okay. Go um, we are all ready to go and snorkel in Pigeon Island. Right there. Um, it's just started raining there, unfortunately. But hopefully by the time we get over there, it'll um, the rain would have died off and we should have some nice snorkeling days ahead of us. It's supposed to be really um, clear and there is also a statue of Jacques Cousteau over oh, there. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, and apparently you are meant to kiss the... The That's statue of Jacques Cousteau for good for divers good luck or some, something touch like that. Touch him on the head. Oh, <laughs> thank God I didn't kiss no. him. Apparently, you're only supposed to touch him on the head. Jacques Cousteau, jeez. <laughs> Oops. I think I found Jacques Cousteau's head. <laughs> Good draw, that's fantastic. That's a new personal best. Possibly. You made it look easy. <laughs> really? You stopped for a break. You stopped halfway down. <laughs> no. Great job. I was like, I meant to take my snorkel out, why not? I don't think I can break the bike, I don't think I can buy my dad. Made it look easy. Rat. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look at that little rat. Yeah, it's fine. Just uh just time your jumps between the waves and it'll be fine. <laughs> That's well. Oh man, that was some seriously awesome diving actually. Snorkeling, sorry. And um, that was really, really good. It's 
especially uh, like everything was kind of in reach and within snorkeling capability which is quite good and a little, little bit of free diving maybe um, yeah. yeah I really enjoyed that I think that was really good I concur no it was really good <laughs> clear water lots of fish and now it's obviously a marine park because they're just fearless the fish don't um, they just don't care at all they're not worried about anybody down here I got a new PB on the, uh, the free diving, I, I don't know how deep it is, but it was, I reckon, 30 feet at the pool. Um, I'm gonna have to suss this out because uh, there were definitely, there were divers down there. Yeah, scuba divers. Yeah, so there they, were scuba divers. If that so. was a course, an open water yeah. course, then they kind of Maybe been, 12 meters, which is, yeah. that's uh, 30, 36, feet. 36 feet. Probably not, but let's see. <laughs> Beautiful morning. We're just across from Pigeon Island still. That's it over there. We spent the morning yesterday editing and the afternoon diving on Pigeon Island where we touched the head of the lucky statue of Jacques Cousteau. Um, this morning's plan is to just head into the main, I won't call it a town, but the main village uh, of the bay and just check it out and explore it. Where are we, Kiara? No idea still. Uh, Guada, no, that's not the right word. That's the French word. Um, we are in the town opposite, so mainland town. Oh my god. <laughs> We're in the village opposite Pigeon Island. First, and then I can describe where we are. Fiji first. Yes. Hamburgers. Where? Well. We pretty much covered that in about two minutes. Yep, the, um, it's done. The shore opposite uh, Pigeon Island is sort of, it's kind of like a road trip village, you know, like you drive down the coast and you sort of stop along here and then you, you have your little snorkeling trip out to the island and then you come back and you, you might have, your lunch, here. have your lunch at a little little cafe yep. thing, but that's, that's really all there back. is here. It's a lovely spot for a day on the beach. Yes. Um, but other than that, is that it? Adam reminded me that we don't have enough money for lunch. Well, we so just had a discussion stop. last night about budgeting and uh, <laughs> and how much of a rude shock it was. And you're like, oh, let's go out for lunch. Let's have burgers. So I'm hungry. Yeah, well. Go Hunger home trumps and all budgets right now. Go home right and make now. yourself some noodles and rice. Or noodles, beans and rice. I had that yesterday. Well, noodles. I told you, we're eating beans and rice. Indefinitely. <sighs> he did not tell me that we're eating beans and rice. He heard himself say it in a video that he was editing this morning. And now he's like, Still stands. I said it. Still stands. <laughs> Oh dear. After striking out in the town and being a bit too broke to buy hamburgers, we went back to the shops and picked up ingredients for making our own barbecue lunch back on the boat. Barbecue time! I should be eating with my hands. <laughs> knife and fork, not required. Um, really good. Good barbecue. We are also just had an Australian boat that we met here when we first arrived. Um, they just pulled up in their dinghy and they were planning to go and have a barbecue over on, um, or like a, a fire on Pigeon Island. Why, why are you going like this? Playing music. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, they're planning to have a fire on Pigeon Island tonight. So we'll head over there later in a couple of hours. And um, I've decided I'll stop eating some, you know, I've eaten my meat, now I'll stop eating this so that I can uh, fill up again for the next round of barbecues later on. So we just headed off to, um, back to Pigeon Island to have a bit of a barbecue on the beach again. We're getting good at this. Um, with some of fr friends that we made uh, just yesterday, they swung by the boat, they saw the flag. And uh, they're Australian as well, so they come and have a chat. And um, we're going to go catch up with them now on Pigeon Island and have some dinner and drinks. This 
se sakura te yaseni To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin The following morning we made a short hop north to a small village on the northwest corner called De Hay. Okay, so we have arrived in De Ye, which I'm pretty sure that's how you say it, even though it definitely doesn't look like that the way it's spelt. De Shay. Looks like Deshay, but apparently it's at DA. DA! Um, we are going to, on a river walk. So there is a little river down there, just n near a fishing jetty kind of place. And um, the river comes all the way from the rainforest, uh, the mountains up in the rainforest up there. So we're going to go along a little, a little bit of a river walk. Um, I definitely don't think we'll be going up the mountains and the rainforest, but um, I think it's about a couple of hours and um, we should see some pretty cool things along the way. Um, we also have a um, in the last anchorage that we were at in Pigeon Island, we uh, met this awesome couple um, on Rome, Australia. Uh, that's what their boat's called, and uh, they're Australians. And so they're also going to come along with us as well. We uh, we caught up with them in this bay, and um, they'll be joining us. What are you smearing on your face while you're Zinc talking? cream! Apparently there is um, swimming there. You went thirty. <laughs> Adventure in days. Working, work, work. Behind two families, a couple of latch ons. Where are the yopes? <laughs> the leeches. <laughs> to almost the end, um, but we, it was about 600 meters off of this cape that I was meant to be at the end. And it's five o'clock at this stage. The sun's um, going down. Exactly, sun's going down, everything like that. And uh, we decided that Adam should just go ahead and have a whole experience for us, pretty much. No, <laughs> it was wonderful. And yeah. he didn't bring a camera because he's an idiot. Yeah, so uh, I don't know, if we rent a car or something like that, which is, is a massive if, we'll, uh, we'll just drive right up to the end and park at the end of this road that we're walking on now and uh, we'll just do the last end bit and just kind of like wrap everything up there and show you that. Yeah. <laughs> if you're ever in, uh, where are we? If you're ever in Deshaies though, go yeah. and uh, just follow the river, keep going and just when you get to the keep place going. that looks keep like going. the end, keep going. 600 metres more, it gets a bit slippy and a bit rough and you'll think that there's just nothing coming and then bang, it'll be there. Just keep going. Yes. But actually, it was a really, really cool day. It was really fun. Afternoon, actually. It was only a couple of hours. That's a long um, walk, though. Yeah. 
But yeah, it's five o'clock, so we're pretty, you know, pretty hungry right now. Well, we got kids too. Like, there's yeah. two families and they've got kids, so we we, don't we, have we, kids. you don't set a cracking pace yeah. when you've got this many people. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. Still a lovely day, and, and some of us got to see the end, so it wasn't all for vain. Some of us had closure. Actually, we saw a very good, uh, okay, let me ret retrace my words. In the Caribbean, there's te there seem to be a lot of naked sailors, um, and I'm definitely not going to name names on which flags they come from, but there is one particular country um, that they seem to come from. But we saw a very good, ingenious um, alternative to that the other day. Yeah, a Some Canadian guy, guy. A Canadian guy, yes. I'll name him because he should be proud. Yep. He, uh, he was anchoring and instead of being completely naked like most of them are when they anchor, he actually had a robe over him. Silk robe. Class. Right there. That's class. Like you want to go au natural when you're sailing, fine. But when you pull in, don the, don the Hugh Hefner robe. Yep. At least and, then uh, you look pimpy and classy. Then you look classy. And you're like, who's this gentleman sailing in with his silk robe? Exactly. There we go, you heard it here first. Actually, you probably heard it in Canada first. But please do this. <laughs>